In this video, we're going to find the volume of spheres. So let's start by looking at the formula to find the volume. It shows us that we'll need to multiply the fraction 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed, or the radius to the third power. So from the formula, you can see that the only piece of information we need to find the volume of a sphere is the measure of the radius. Then we can plug that in to the formula, then we'll have the volume. So let's try some examples here. Find the volume of the sphere to the nearest hundredth. The first thing we'll always do is write the formula we need, 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. I do want to point out that if you don't like this fraction of 4 thirds, you can rewrite the formula differently by saying 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. I'm going to stick to this for consistency, but I would recommend choosing a way that works best for you and sticking with it. Okay, so now let's write the formula with our radius substituted in. So we look at the sphere, and the radius is here from the center to the edge of the sphere, and it's 7. Now, at this point, I'm going to use the pi key on a calculator. If you're using 3.14, your answers are going to be similar, but a little bit different. And I'm going to keep this fraction. I'm going to multiply 4 thirds times pi times 7 cubed. I would recommend pausing it and trying this yourself, and then compare our solutions. So when I multiply these... The volume is 1,436, rounded to the nearest hundredth is 76 hundredths. And since it's volume, our units are always going to be cubic units, so this one is feet cubed. Now try the one at the right. So it says find the volume of the sphere in terms of pi. So we're going to solve this one the same way by starting with the formula, 4 thirds pi r cubed. Looking at the sphere, it gives me that the radius is 9. So I'm going to substitute this into my formula. 4 thirds times pi times 9 cubed. Now, in terms of pi is important, it means that our solution is going to have pi written in it. So we need to actually multiply everything except for pi. So if I multiply 4 thirds times 9 to the third power, that gives me 972. Then I bring down pi, and in terms of pi, my volume is 972 pi inches cubed. Great, let's do a couple more. Find the volume round to the nearest tenth. So here's our formula. If you look at this sphere, they gave us the measure of the diameter, but we need the radius. Well, if the diameter is 8, we know the radius is half of 8, or 4. Substitute the radius into your formula. And now we need to multiply these three values, 4 thirds times pi times 4 to the third power. Rounded to the nearest tenth gives us 268 and 1 tenth millimeters cubed. Next it says a ball of yarn has a diameter of 5 yards. Find the volume of the ball of yarn round to the nearest hundredth. So right off the bat, we see that they gave us the diameter, but in our formula, we're going to need the radius. If the diameter is 5 yards, half of 5 is 2 and 5 tenths. So that's what we'll use for the radius. Write out your formula. Now substitute the radius. And let's multiply. 4 thirds times pi times 2.5 to the third power gives us a volume of 65 and 45 hundredths yards cubed. Here it says Anthony fills up a beach toy that is shaped like a sphere. He puts 2,304 pi cubic inches of air in the beach toy. What is the diameter of the beach toy? Okay, so we know we're talking about a sphere, and we know that we're talking about volume because of this. Anything that's in cubic units of measurement is volume. We are looking for the diameter of this sphere. Well, since we know the volume of a sphere formula, let's start there and see if that helps us. The volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Well, we want to look for anything we can substitute into the formula that we're given. And the only piece of information we're given is this volume. 
So in place of V, let's write what they gave us, 2,304 pi. Then I'll write the rest of the formula. Okay, so now we're looking at this equation and we need to solve it for the radius. We want to get R by itself. And think about what's happening right now with the radius. It's being multiplied by 4 thirds and by pi. Well, the inverse of multiplication is division. You can divide out both of those values really in any order that you want. I'm going to start by dividing by pi, and I'll show you why. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. But here on the right, any value over itself is just 1, so that cancels to 1. That also happens on the left. This will cancel to 1. So what I have now is 2,304 equals 4 thirds times the radius cubed. Okay, so let's undo the multiplication of 4 thirds and divide both sides by 4 thirds. This will reduce to 1, and 2,304 divided by 4 thirds is 1,728. Okay, I'm going to bring this up here. So here's what we have now. The radius cubed equals 1,728. The inverse operation of taking something to the third power or cubing it is to take the cube root. So radius will equal whatever the cube root of 1,728 is. Okay, so we're looking for what number times itself three times will give us 1,728. I'll also note that if you're using a calculator, you can take 1,728 and raise it to the power of one-third. That's just a calculator tidbit. But when we do that, the cube root of 1728 is 12. Always go back and look at your question. It said, what is the diameter? So we have one more step. We know if the radius is 12, then the diameter is double the radius. So the diameter would be 24 and what's our unit of measurement? We have inches. Try a similar problem here. This sphere has a volume of 36 pi cubic inches. What is the radius of the sphere? Always start with your formula. What we're given this time is the volume. So we're going to replace the volume here with 36 pi. I want to start isolating the variable, so I'm going to divide both sides by pi. On both sides, it will cancel or reduce to 1. So now we have 36 equals 4 thirds times the radius cubed. Again, to undo this multiplication, we'll divide both sides by 4 thirds. This reduces to 1, and 36 divided by 4 thirds equals 27. So if 27 is the radius cubed, then the radius will equal the cube root of 27. What number times itself three times gives us 27? The cube root is three. Three inches. All right, well, you just found the volume of spheres. Great work. I'm going to show five extra practice problems, so feel free to pause the next two slides if you need a little bit more practice.